Uh, yeah, there we go. Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Sarah Coley. I'm our coordinator of student services, and I'm here today with the fabulous Dr. Reba, who's one of our most critical and important and beloved partners here in Newport Mesa. She's here today to talk with us about good moods and good foods, quick, healthy, and happy meals. Um, so, Dr. Reba, I'll let you go ahead and get started. Well, hi everybody. I am so excited to actually bring you home to my kitchen and share with you some suggestions on uh, really how you can use family meals to help your family uh, heal from the pandemic. Um, so I, let's start on the, the next slide if you don't mind, Sarah. Great. So I guess the first thing is just, you know, we're doing mental health awareness and I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that it's okay to be sad. It's been a tough year. And so, and most people have been turning to screens and food to comfort themselves, which is not a healthy way to do it. And so today I kind of want to give you some tips on a healthy way of getting your family to kind of cope with what's been going on. You know, we know about exercise and getting enough sleep and doing things that are mindful. But um, today I really want to focus on something that you can do every day. And those are family meals. So if we go to the next slide. So family meals are really good for our moods and for our children's well-being. You know, we're driving around getting kids to soccer practices and church groups and tutors and all these activities. But really, uh, families sitting together and eating, those children are less likely to be involved with drinking, drugs, early sexual encounters. They're less likely to be depressed. Um, they have increased emotional well-being. Um, they have more social behavior and they have more life satisfaction. So there's a lot of reasons for us really just to take the, a few minutes to sit down and have a healthy, a healthy meal together. We can go to the next slide. Um, but family meals can be drama. I mean, <laughs> there, there's a scene from this movie like Saturday Night Fever and they're all like hitting each other at the table. I think that, and I'm Italian, so I can kind of identify with that. Like sometimes there's a lot of drama that can happen at the dinner table. You get everybody together, it's, you're hurried, you know, what's for dinner? There's all this pressure. Us moms, we're, you know, we're trying to hold it together and get the food out and so forth, but sometimes, you know, just taking a few yoga breaths and just, you know, leaving your swords and just sitting down at the table um, is, is, is really valuable. And I just wanted to give you some psychology around mealtimes to help you kind of figure out what you can control and what you can't. Because when um, parents get so, they feel so, um, you know, torn because they want their kids to eat healthy. And, um, and, and so, but forcing and coaxing kids to do that is, is not a healthy way of doing it. So let, me, let me teach you a few secrets. We'll go to the next slide. So the first one is like the holy grail of what we do. And actually I, I learned this from Ellen Satter. She's this amazing woman who is a social worker and a nutritionist. And she came up with this thing called this division of responsibility. Now, what is that? It tells you that we work like any relationship. Um, it takes two, okay? So parents have a job and children have a job in the feeding relationship. Well, who's in charge of what, you know? And so if you know kind of what you can control and what you can't control, it's gonna make mealtimes more um, pleasurable. So, so the first thing as a parent, you're in charge of what's being served. So don't ask those, those kids what they want because, oh my gosh, it's gonna be chicken fingers and fries and ice cream and <laughs> because, Hey, let's face it, there's, that's what the commercials are saying. And the commercials, they know to market towards kids and get them to want to eat those unhealthy foods. So I'm going to teach you some, some healthy foods today that'll be great for, for moods. But so the what is really on you. So like I said, you can, don't say, should we have vegetables for dinner? You know, they could maybe, when you're at the grocery store, like pick some vegetables for dinner this week, that's fine. But really, it's your job to make sure that your children and your whole family are getting a variety of nutritious foods. And when food is being served, kids have small stomachs. They should be offered food about every two to four hours. And our teenagers, you know, we think, well, they don't have a small stomach anymore. They're, but they're growing exponentially. And they're also, you know, many times involved with sports. So offering food throughout the day is very important. Like I said, I try to offer food about every two to four hours. Um, and finally, making mealtimes pleasant. So like I said, if you've had a stressful day, take a few 
um, yoga breaths and just relax and um, really love the people you're with instead of, you know, there's nothing more important than this family meal. But if it's a fight, then it's not gonna be protective for your children. And finally, turn off the screens. They find that families that, or people that are watching a screen uh, two or more times a week, are, they're, not, they're more likely to uh, gain excess weight. Why? Because they're not listening to their stomach and they're not listening to one another. The protective thing about a family meal is to sit down and to talk at that table, okay? You can talk about your day, you can play games like highs and lows, like what were your highs and lows? You can tell jokes, um, make it a special time, okay? And, um, and kids have a job too, and it's, but it's very simple and it's, and it's hard on us parents, but they're actually in charge of if they're gonna eat and how much, okay? So as much as you spend the time and you cook and you make these things and they're supposed to be good for your mood, I need you to like sing the Frozen song, okay? And let it go. So we want parents to serve that food and then just don't focus on if they're eating or how much you cannot control that. I wish you could, okay? Um, but what you can do is you can serve it and then just make children feel love for who they are and not what they eat. Wow, you had such great manners at the bank today. Thank you for helping your sister with her chair. I like the way you came home and did homework. Start giving labeled praises to everybody around the table. It will make everybody's mood better. Everyone likes to be complimented and food can be such a pressure area for a lot of families. So we wanna take that pressure away. All right, let's go to the next slide. So, and there is a psychology around food. And, and so if you, you know, people grew up with all kinds of crazy things, like if you eat your green beans, you can have ice cream, or, you know, if you eat that, or you have more of this or have less of that. So talking about the portions we really want to avoid and also, you know, controlling portions when kids feel like they're not going to get enough food. Oh my gosh, they are going to feel food insecure and they're going to start hiding and hoarding food. So we really want to make sure that children um, and adults feel like they can have as much as they want. So that's why I don't like counting calories. I don't like restricting portions. I have patients that have lost 100, 200 pounds, and I've never told them how much to eat. I've said, put a bunch of healthy food out there and turn off the screens and just let them listen to their bodies and eat what they need. And it works like a charm. Um, okay, so let's go to the next, the next one. Now, another thing I just wanna to touch base on because my uh, phone has been ringing. We have been getting a lot of new patients and everybody's freaked out about their weight. I gave, gained weight during COVID, I wanna lose weight. And I really want everybody to, instead of focusing on your weight, which comes from a place of self-hate, really focus on your health, all right? Focusing on your health comes from a place of self-love. So if you're eating a salad because you have to lose weight, that's very different mentally than I'm eating a salad because it's good for me. And so if we can shift that in our own minds, our children are gonna mimic that and um, it'll go a long way. All right, so let's get to the next slide. And um, okay, so now I just wanna teach you a little bit about food. So we've got the good psychology, we've got everyone sitting down. Now um, we wanna really focus on what we're serving and the types of foods available right now are especially bad for moods. Uh, the processed foods, foods with added salt, foods with added sugar, uh, foods with chemicals in them, even like deli meats, even egg whites, those are all can be foods that can alter our moods. So eating foods that are natural are gonna be the best way. And I can show you on the next slide. So you don't have to be a dietitian. If the food was here like 200 years ago, it's a natural food. If it comes from a place that was, you know, made at a company and it can last for 10 years at a convenience store, it's probably not a healthy natural food. It's probably not designed for your body. And so when we're serving our families fruits and vegetables and nuts and natural foods, um, they, it will be good for their bodies, but it'll also be good for their brain and their moods. All right, let's get to the next one. Um, and so this is my friend Agla. He is um, a Pelican that's been working with us on this uh, program we're trying to do with PBS SoCal and the schools. And uh, he helps ch the children rem remind them to drink more water. And water is key. Water is one of those things that everybody forgets. 
Um, but they've even done studies recently on, and they've looked at men and women and actually us women or even worse. If, if you have a teenage daughter or you yourself as a mother um, are feeling a little moody, have a glass of water, you may be dehydrated. <laughs> dehydration can really affect your mood. And I tell the kids all the time um, when I talk to them um, uh, for patient care, I'm, I'm like, how do you know if you're drinking enough water? I was, you know, they're like, I have to drink eight cups a day or this and that. I'm like, no. I was like, look at your pee. Doctors get to talk about gross things. So if your pee is yellow like this carrot, guess what? You're not drinking enough water. Your pee should be almost clear. So no one needs to chase you around with a water bottle. Are you drinking enough water? Just make sure that you are, um, you're drinking water throughout the day. And when you pee, take a look. If it's, if it's almost clear, then you're, you're getting enough hydration. Now, if you're on B vitamins, the bed is off because your pee will get neon yellow and some other medications. But for the most part, um, that's the best way of doing it. So I just, today, I just had some fun with my water. I went out in the garden and I put some rosemary in here. I actually made a picture of this. I put lemons, I have like a lemon tree. We put some tangerines. I grabbed some sage, which is weird because I don't usually put that in the water, but it, the, the leaves look so pretty and it's actually giving kind of a neat flavor and also rosemary. So, but you can put fresh mint. You can just have water plain. Uh, you, flat water is always best, but you can also do sparkling water just to try to change things up. Um, but just try to have, um, just try to make sure you're having fruit throughout, uh, water throughout the day. Um, I don't recommend juices or sports drinks or sodas. Those, those can all um, have high sugars. They can have a lot of chemicals in them. I'd much rather have you eat a fruit and drink water than drink fruit juice, okay? Because it's when you're drinking the juice, you're really getting the sugar from the fruit and not feeling full from eating that fruit. Okay, all right, so the next one is a kind of a fun little recipe I have for you. Uh, oh, before I do that, I just wanted to cover. So the foods, like we said before, the foods that come from nature are gonna be the ones that are the best for your mood. There's a, some particular foods that um, they've done some research on, uh, foods that are rich in omega-3 fatty acids, like walnuts or salmon is especially good for moods and almonds. Uh, fruits and vegetables are really important, okay? And we should be adding fruits and vegetables to all of your meals and snacks, layering them in every day because you're going to serve them. The kids may or may not eat them. So we want to make them available all day long. Um, nuts and um, other uh, natural proteins are healthy, uh, seeds and grains. You really want to have 100% whole grains, all right? So the process, the white grains or the white rice and the white spaghetti, those all turn into sugar. Once I get, it gets our blood sugars going up too high. When they go up high, they come crashing down. But when you have something like 100% whole grain pasta or brown rice, which we have a recipe for today, um, that is going to keep your, your blood sugar stable and your mood stable. Um, and then fermented foods are really good for your bacteria in your gut which translates to your brain. And so uh, yogurts, kimchi, sauerkraut, fermented foods are really important to help make sure you have good bacteria in your body. You just have to be careful because most of the uh, yogurts that we see commercially are flavored and they have added sugar to them. So you wanna get plain and we have a recipe for that today. And then finally, just like natural proteins, lean proteins and legumes um, are important as well. So, okay. So now I will get you to the first one. So Spoon, who's our chef um, with our, our program with Dr. Uh, Reba's or Dr. Patricia's Health Club is gonna help me with this one, but I'm gonna make a pizza. All right, now, it, okay, so, you know, typical situation, your kids are hungry, okay? Your family's hungry. And, you know, it's so easy to call for a pizza, right? I mean, it's so easy, but it's like 20, $25. And it's not healthy. Nobody makes 100% whole grain pizza. That crust is white and processed grain, okay? So I have, we tried this in many different ways. We finally figured out that taking 100% whole wheat tortilla is, is the key to making a homemade pizza. So you can make this in literally 15 minutes, like cooked and done and prepared. Um, you just put this down in a baking sheet, all right? 
Um, and then I just take any kind of spaghetti sauce, one that if I look on the uh, label, it should not have added sugar. So it's the spaghetti sauce should have, um, you know, like tomatoes, onions, you know, things, garlic, those types of things, basil, those are all great. Um, so this is one that I found that's uh, natural. And I'm just going to put a few spoons of this on here and just put it on, you know, the beautiful thing about spaghetti, I mean, not spaghetti, pizza, is that it's, um, you know, there's no, no, it doesn't have to look perfect. It always tastes good. Um, kids can get involved with this and they can help, you know, take different vegetables and make happy faces or whatever on it. Most of the time with me, I'm just trying to get it done and get it on the table. So um, I put out the spaghetti sauce. I just did it like that. And then really any cheese you have at home, <laughs> but I have mozzarella cheese, which is a good one. Sometimes we only have Parmesan cheese. I use that. Um, you can even use, like I said, you could use cheddar cheese. It's not a classic, but who cares? It's what you have at home. It's going to be much healthier than getting it from, um, you know, delivered and so forth. So that's it. Okay. You can take that and, and you just preheat your oven. I usually put it in like about 375 for about 12 to 15 minutes. My daughter likes it a little crispier. If you don't, then make it a little less. When it is crispier though, then it's easier to cut and, and, and handle because if it's too floppy, it'll kind of fall apart, okay? So that's how it looks. I'm just gonna stick this in the oven and I will show you how it looks, okay? So once again, so here's my, I, this is one that I took and I, I cut it up. I used, I love cooking scissors. They're like my favorite. Um, once it got a little bit cool, I was able to cut it up. And then once again, I'm going to serve this with a fruit and a vegetable. So I have strawberries, broccoli, carrots, nothing cooked, no dirty dishes. Um, this is very simple. I didn't even, you know, put it on a, a, I put it directly on the baking sheet. So the baking sheet's your only dirty mess on this. And, um, and this is just, it's, it's fun and it's easy and the kids really enjoy it. All right. So that's I where love I'm I love this one because we've been struggling because we're my son's playing baseball now and it's like we've got practice two nights a week and we're just like what do we even do for like a meal that's healthy and quick and you know then we've got to do bedtimes and all that stuff and I love how quick that one is and just healthy and fun. Well and that's that's the key and that's where you know it's so hard it's just tough for all of us we don't have a lot of time to cook we know we're supposed to you know do this so I, I always try I, I'm not a fancy chef you know, there's, um, there's people that make beautiful foods that taste a lot better, but it's quick, healthy, and easy. And at the end of the day, if I'm in a good mood because I didn't spend hours in the kitchen making a big mess, <laughs> if I can sit down, it's going to be better for everyone's mood, trust me. Um, so, um, and here's some other examples, like I've got blueberries and like just little carrots. And you can have the carrots and celery and radishes, jicama cut up already, and you just pull them out. And then, and then leftovers, put them in a Ziploc bag and send them to school. They got their fruit and their vegetable for school. Okay. All right. So the next one is, is a little different. So this is my uh, red beans and rice recipe. Okay. Now, um, I, am, I really think that we all, like, we all need to eat a variety of food. And I just feel like sometimes, uh, you know, it's like, what's for dinner? Chicken, what's for dinner? Steak, what's for dinner? fish. I feel like we really lean on those animal proteins, but there are plant proteins that are that are healthy. And so I really want to make sure that we kind of, you know, broaden the types of foods we're being exposed to. And so that's why I thought I would do this red beans and rice recipe, which I actually made for dinner last night. Um, I have two versions of this, so um, we can actually get off the recipe. Okay. Um, so the, the first version is, you know, you get the dried red beans. Okay, now there's different ways of preparing the beans because you, you need to either soak them overnight, there's all different things. I like the, the hot soak, it's like the quicker version. And also they say that when you, um, when you do the hot soak, that that actually helps dissolve some of the uh, chemicals that are in the beans that make you a little gassy. So that's kind of nice. So you're gonna take about two cups of uh, red dried beans and you'll rinse them off in a colander and you're going to, you know, sort them. If there's any that are, you know, look funny, just take them out. And, and then um, put about 10 cups of water and, and bring it to a boil. And you boil it for about two or three minutes. And then you cover the, the pot up and you're gonna let it sit for about an hour. 
Now, all of those things that came out in the water, you're going to rinse off. Okay. You're going to rinse them off and then you're going to add more water. And I usually go about two inches above the line of the beans. And sometimes you have to add more and so forth. You can add at that time beforehand, you can take some onions and you can, um, and you can just saute them with a little bit of olive oil and then put the beans in there with them. And then they're going to cook for a long time. It's going to take like 90 to 120 minutes. Now, this is great and it's natural and it's wonderful. But for me, it's got to be one of those days where I just have some time to cook. It's a leisurely Sunday. It's a day I've got stuff going on. It, it's just not practical for during the week. And so my, and then, and oh, and like I said, and we'll do it with brown rice and brown rice takes 40 minutes to cook. It's not even like the quick white rice, but it's so much more nutritious. It's got about 80 to 90% more nutrition in the brown rice and the wild rice than the white rice because these are whole grains and not processed grains. So like I said, that's a long process. So for my quick, healthy version of this, I go with the canned red, red beans, okay? Now, um, this particular brand actually doesn't have a lot of salt. There's like less than five milligrams, which is pretty amazing. But for me, I'm just so used to anything that I get from a can. And even if you get food donated from a can, I really wanna make sure that you rinse rinse them off. So I'll take them, my canned beans and I'll dump them out. And then I already rinsed these guys um, over the sink. I, I just rinsed them off completely. And then I'll just take my onions and uh, I'll take a little bit of olive oil and I'll put my onions in. And you know, like I said, I could have already sauteed these in a frying pan. And then I have another pan to wash, but that's not my style. I'm like quick and dirty, one, one pot. Okay. And then I'm going to put this, um, I'm going to cook these, these onions and I'll, I'll tend them. And in the meantime, I have my best friend is called frozen brown rice. It's amazing because if you undercook brown rice, nobody will eat it because it really doesn't taste good. But it's perfectly cooked already. All I have to do is heat it up. And yes, some people might heat it up in the microwave. I do like to heat it up on the stove top just because I feel like it tastes a little bit better. I'll put some uh, olive oil with that. I'll do some spices. And actually, I've, I have a new friend from India, so I've been inspired to try more, more spices. So I'm tr I, I put a little bit of ground uh, cardamom and a little bit of um, tandoori spice in it yesterday, just to different. But you can put you can put the salt and pepper. Um, we love like garlic salt and herbs de Provence. So you and your kids can kind of play around with different spices that they might want to try on their rice. Um, um, and then when we're, after this, the, um, so while we're working on the rice, the onions are going to start cooking and then we'll take the beans and when the onions are completely done, which they're not yet, but I just, for purposes of being expedient, I'm going to, Red beans. And then what I'll do is I will add a little bit more water back in because don't forget I rinsed these guys out. And so I'll put a little bit of water in. I like it to be a little creamy. These are these are fully cooked beans. So this this thing is this thing is as soon as it's hot, it's done. As soon as my onions are cooked, and you want those onions to get translucent, um, then then it's done and, and it's ready. And like I said, I served it for dinner, so I have leftovers from last night. Um, and once again, I have some sugar snap peas and raspberries, but we have the rice and beans, and then the fr the fruit and the vegetable. And that's kind of how you always want to balance out your dinners. You want to have four food groups. You want to have whatever you're serving, you know, your protein, whether it's from a plant or an animal, whole grain, and then we're going to have our fruit and our vegetable. Fruit and the vegetables got to go on everything, okay? And like I said, they may eat it, they may not, but you served it A plus from me, and whether they eat it or not, we're just going to let that go. So, so I do, um, 
Dr. Reba, I have a question for you. So we, we have our one and a half year old who sometimes he won't, he doesn't want what we're having and he doesn't eat. Do I need to be worried about that? Or do I just, he's just, he's, you're going to feed him again in another couple hours. You're going to socialize him, have him come sit to the table. Don't make it drama. Mm-hmm. Don't be like, you have to eat. Take yeah. it out, thank you, bye. Oh, it does. It, it, it doesn't work. If I right. did, I'd say totally do it. Right. Um, but just, <laughs> just have them be part of it. Um, and, and usually what we find is when the battles stop around food, they do tend to try more and eat more. In fact, if you coax a child, eat it, take a bite, take a bite, they're actually less likely to eat that food the next time it's offered to them. That's so interesting. So talking about, talk about their day. Wow, I like the way you're sitting in your chair. And we had so much fun at the park today and you were so great in your bathtub and you're just going to make them feel loved and they're just going to want to have dinner with you, which is important because when that one and a half year old is 16 and they're like, bye, I'm going, you you don't want to have them go to someone else's house. You want to be the house where they all want to come to. Right. And that starts by just making those mealtimes pleasant and not fighting about the food. And like I said, there's absolutely nothing you can say that will make your child eat food um, so don't, you can actually make them do the opposite. That's great. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. My pleasure. Okay, cool. So we've got the brown rice and beans done. Um, like I said, my quick and dirty, and then the old fashioned one, which is, they're both great. Um, now the next one is, oh, I thought I would just do a little, um, thing for, um, Mother's Day. Because we know it's so nice to have people bring you breakfast in bed, and yet it's so scary because the, what how's your kitchen going to look when it's done, and what the curtain's going to be on fire? So there's all these layers to this. So I thought I would just come up with two healthy, simple recipes that the kids that kids can do with dad, or they can do on their own, depending on their age. Um, but the first one is um, is just like a parfait. Okay, so I just took plain yogurt. This yogurt is actually from, oh, thank you. This yogurt is actually from plain, uh, just, uh, this is from cashews. Um, I have like, I, I, for me, I like the cashew yogurt better. It's just not as tart, but it, please, you can have cow's milk. There's any type of milk. It's just, it's unsweetened. That's the most important thing with yogurt. And then it's got the good bacteria in it, okay? So I just have plain yogurt. Okay, now plain yogurt is way too sour for my taste, even this one from cashew. So what I do is I will take unsweetened applesauce. Oh, I just poured some in the coconut oil, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour some in here, okay? That's my secret weapon. I just made this, um, let me see, I gotta get the wipe off my hand here. I just made this, um, oatmeal, I mean oatmeal. I just, I do this with my oatmeal too. I just made this yogurt sweet. <laughs> I put old fashioned, I mean, I put this unsweetened applesauce and this is gonna make it taste sweet without adding sugar. And then they just put whatever fruit they want in. So they can put blueberries in, they could put strawberries in. I lately, am, I love peaches, okay? And so I just kind of thought I'd share this little trick because most people don't think about it, but I love peaches, but they're not in season yet. And, but I like them all year round, okay? Now, technically you wanna eat foods when they're in season, but but if you like them, you like them. So what I do is I will take the frozen peaches, okay? And I'm just gonna put this on this, um, on a piece of foil, okay? And, um, and usually the frozen ones, they're not that sweet because they have, they're, they're probably been done off season too. Um, if they were that good, they would have been, you know, used then. And then I'll, this probably will be good with the applesauce in here anyways. I'm gonna take a little bit of my coconut oil, just a little bit on a spoon. I do feel like it helps with the flavor. Okay, coconut oil is from a plant, it's very good for you. And I'm just gonna sprinkle some, let's see what I'm doing. I'm gonna sprinkle some cinnamon on here. And then, and then I'm just gonna put it in the oven for like 350. And this I cook for a little bit longer than you'd think because I really want to soften up these peaches because like I said, they're not usually as soft and sweet as um, they are when they're, it's summer and they're perfectly in season, okay? So I just fold it up. Like I said, I don't like dirty dishes, so I got it in the foil, so it's not going to make a big mess. I'll put it on a baking sheet and I will stick that in the oven and I will show you how my one looks 
So this is one I made earlier today. It's one of those things looks gross, tastes good. Um, and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna put these, uh, put these peaches on top of my yogurt. You can add more cinnamon now that you've done this. You could add some vanilla if you wanted to. Um, so we've got, so that's it. I just put the peaches in here. And then to top it off, I'm gonna put some walnuts on here. Walnuts are rich in omega-3 fatty acids. They're good for your brain. You could put some old fashioned oatmeal on top of here too, if you wanted to. But I now what I've done is I have actually, um, I have in one bowl, a healthy breakfast. Oh, reminds <laughs> me of Julia Child when she's like, throw the chicken on the floor. I'm kind of tipping things over a little bit. Um, so what I like to do is I, I've got all three things, one dirty dish. Okay, this can be made very quickly. And like I said, you didn't need to heat up the peaches. That was just an extra. Um, but we've got three food groups. We've got a protein, which is the walnuts. Okay, and like I said, they're rich with omega-3s, which is good for your heart. It's good for your mood. We've got the peaches and the applesauce, which are fruit. And finally, we've got the, the dairy. We've got the dairy group, which is rich in calcium and has some protein in it. And that is going to be um, our yogurt. So all three in one, you can put this on a plate, strawberries, each, you could put the nuts on the side and you can let people have the option of putting them on. You could sprinkle some chia seeds on or raisins, but that is, that's a healthy breakfast. And, and like I said, and you can also make these very quickly um, with your family. You could do the heated up peaches maybe with your dinner for a fruit. And then the leftovers you could use the next day for um, oatmeal or for, for yogurt. Okay, so kids can do this. They're, you know, it's a, it's a pretty easy recipe. It's pretty simple. The next one I wanted to show you is something that we have pretty much, uh, I would say, um, most days of the week, we have avocado toast. We just love avocado toast. So, um, so you're just going to take, once again, you want to take 100% whole wheat bread. And I've already toasted these, so I have one from the toaster. Um, and then um, with the little guys, you, you know, you, you may need an adult to help them. You don't need a super sharp knife. I just use my, my, you know, my dinner knives. I don't use, you know, cutting knives or anything like that because I don't want anyone's fingers hurt. Um, and you're just going to cut around and peel it apart like that. Now, what we can do with this avocado is, we, and you can, I sometimes I'll like, cut it, like um, score it a little bit, and it's a little easier to scoop out, but we're just gonna scoop it out like peanut butter, okay? And just put it on the, on the toast. And I'm just gonna keep going with this. You could stick an egg on here, and once again, you've got three food groups, which would be great. The avocado is a vegetable, the bread is a whole grain, um, and, and then the egg would be a protein or you could put it on the side with a fruit. I'm gonna put um, some salt and pepper on here. Um, people get freaked out about salt, like is that healthy? High salt foods are not healthy, okay? But we are not doing high salt foods. We are eating natural foods that don't have salt in them. So if you have like a sea salt or a Himalayan salt or some natural salt, not like some of the brands actually have sugar in them. Our popular brands have sugar in their salt, dextrose is put on the label, um, and, but the sea salt doesn't. Um, and so you can add some to your food um, and still have a healthy, healthy food. You don't have to, if you'd rather not, if you like it tastes better that way, that's fine. Um, but sometimes we get so, like, especially with vegetables, we feel like we have to steam them and we, they can't have salt and all of a sudden they really don't taste good. But if we can add some cheese or we can add some, um, good salts or we could add some, um, different herbs or, 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 um, oils, um, that are healthy, like olive oil, um, then I, I think you should. Um, and then you can have some fun with this. So with the kids, maybe they'll um, have these little pieces of carrots and a tomato. My mom helped me cut these this morning. And we, they can make a little, little, little face on there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but just, you know, they can have fun. They could do a little art with it. Um, and like I said, you're gonna serve this with a, a fruit or an egg. So we have three food groups and, and there it is. There's your, there's your avocado toast. And you can do two slices, you know, 
it's it's all good. It's easy. Um, and, and like I said, the only thing with, if the kids are real small, then we might have to help them cut the uh, avocado. Um, the, and they can also just do this with peanut butter and they can put some uh, cinnamon on it and then just have it with an apple on the side. That would work too, as long as it's a natural peanut butter. Um, some of the popular brands have sugars and uh, unhealthy oils in them. So you wanna look on your peanut butter or almond butter and just make sure it just says almonds and maybe salt or peanuts and maybe salt and there's no uh, added sugars. This is awesome. I love the idea of just like bringing the kids together too because I feel like too like when we get so busy it's like I just need to do it just to get it done and then it's like but I feel like too if they are able to participate a lot of times they want to eat it more than they do if it's just me like putting it on a plate in front of them. Exactly. No, they need to be vested. And I mean, and, and you can be busy and you can be too busy to cook and, and to have them cook with you. You might, it might, might not feel safe, yeah. but you can have them sitting like on the kitchen island and just, you know, grab, you know, grab some radishes or some carrots and have them draw a picture of it. Like yeah. just get them involved with it or take, you know, and if they're little, littles, give them a plastic knife and have them cut a banana, yeah. <laughs> you know, just kind of just getting them involved in something that's not, you know, they're not around the hot stove. Right. Oh, yeah, my green good. And we do have one question um, yeah. so far. It says, hi, where can I get more ideas like this? So, um, so yeah, so if you actually, if we go to, uh, I think two slides from now, you can see my two websites. So, um, I, if we go, um, so it's, yeah, to, if we go to this next slide, I have two programs. So this is the one we've been, we've been airing on PBS SoCal and we're working on actually a TV show for this, but we have, we're doing in-school programming at like Whittier, we've been doing Palerino, um, Victoria, we're going to be starting soon and some of the other schools at Newport Mesa. Um, and so this is myself and I work with the pup, some puppets and the birds help me teach the kids how to become more healthy, but, and they can go into a website called drphc.org and there's a recipe section. And so this is for like your preschool and kinder and first grade kids and special needs kids. It teaches them to use the letters of the alphabet to be more healthy. So everything is by letters. So we like for the letter A, you know, Agua will talk about drinking more water. Um, we will teach, you know, we'll, we'll learn about avocado toast and ants on a log and so forth. And so they'll learn sports that start with that letter of the day. So all the birds help me teach the kids to be healthy. But in the recipe section, it'll be A to Z. So you can find a radish recipe under R and you can find a hummus recipe under H and, you know, and lentils under L. So if you just scroll through there in the recipe section, you can get tips and, all, and you can get all kinds of recipes. And those are all designed for parents that have preschool and, um, you know, younger children. So uh, we do want to be mindful with like nuts and seeds and popcorn um, that, that ch children can choke on those types of foods. Um, but if the child's four or older, um, they should be able to handle that. And so the, and then, so there'll be a section for parents and they can also learn like how to get my kid to eat more vegetables and um, or how to get my child to drink more water. So there's little tips for them or getting them more active. Um, and there's workbooks for the kids that you can download and print and then they can, and they can actually enter to win contests. So um, uh, if they draw a picture on how they're gonna use the letter A to be healthy, maybe because they're gonna eat more apples or they're gonna try acrobats, then they can draw a picture of that and they can submit it and they can actually win to build a bear or whatever prize we have going on at that time. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. So, and if you go to the next slide, we have videos that I've already recorded at the Discovery Cube. I have um, one for every holiday. So there's a Mother's Day one, there's Father's Day ones. In fact, Father's Day has my healthy ketchup, which is was like, I'm really actually kind of proud of. <laughs> we did burgers, healthy burgers for Father's Day. Um, and then we have a comfort food series. I did a lot of those comfort food series with uh, Damien Square. Um, uh, when he was in the Chargers, he's just He's just transferred to the Browns. So, um, but we've been uh, working with him and he's been on our board. Uh, he's wonderful. Um, he's all about being healthy and getting kids engaged. And um, so we, he's been, we've been, we have like a tailgating thing there in that picture. Um, so he's got all kinds of uh, recipes. He's from the South. So we did a lot of comfort foods. Like there's a healthy mac and cheese and a healthy um, uh, chicken, uh, fried chicken recipe that's not fried, it's actually baked, so. 
That's great. Um, and there's another question about, will this be at Wilson too? I mean, I think we're always looking to expand where we're going, yes, right? We have, yeah, I mean, the thing is about the kinder and preschool classes for the DRPHC, any, any Newport Mesa school, we just added like a bunch of preschools, maybe six or seven preschools this last month, but any, any classroom that's interested, anyone in Newport Mesa can have that for free. We are working with the district and we're also working with um, Lori Hilgard at the, um, to do the summer programming. So um, we will be doing our program for the, the kids over the summer as well. Awesome. I think that I'm gonna go ahead and- Yeah, so that drpatriciamd.com is that that uh, video. That Those are all my cooking videos and, and other questions that they can ask to be more Perfect. healthy. And I put both of those links in the chat. I think people are able to see the chat. And then I also did answer it in the question. And so the links are there. And then we will be sharing the presentation. And so you'll have those links. Um, and so I think that I think that was it as far as the questions go. This was honestly for me as a parent, like I'm like watching and like pulling all of it into you because <laughs> it has been a struggle this, you know, last 18 months of craziness and then it's like I feel like we're getting on track and then something else happens and then we're just like kind of all over the place and we do sit down every night together as a family but you know the foods aren't always as healthy healthy as they should be because we're just like trying to get something together and so I love all these ideas and tips and tricks and things that are quick and easy so this was this was really great good good I'm glad yeah I was like I said I'm a, I'm a, I have a daughter at Newport Mesa yeah <laughs> I'm a working mom it's like I, I can't be like some hypocrite and be telling you these long recipes. It's not what I do. And but there, you can be healthy and, and have it done quickly. So yeah, no, this is this is wonderful. So thank you, Dr. Reva, as always, for your time. We are so grateful for you and for your partnership and for your wonderful advice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the session and then we will have this posted soon up on our parent education website. Wonderful. Thank you so much for, and happy Mother's Day to everybody. Happy thank Mother's you. Day to you. And thank you so much again for your time and for the wonderful session. No, thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.